that is discussion on Banking Revolution Amendment Act. It will be chaired by Sri Vivi Anaskar. And uh, two presenters are in this. One is Mr. Prakash Jain. He is a former additional advocate general. Jani, oh, sorry, sir. Mr. Prakash Jani and, and Mr. Atul Kirwatkar. Please. Anaskar Sabha, please take the chair. बैंकिंग रेगुलेशन एक्ट ने तो एक साल से काफी तहलका मचा रखा है हमारे यहाँ कोई लोग कहते हैं बहुत अच्छा है कोई लोग कहते हैं मार दिया है कुछ कुछ कहते हैं तो इसका क्या मिस्ट्री है क्या अच्छा है क्या बुरा है ये इस आज के सेशन में आपको काफी पता चल जाएगा मैं अब आई लैंड ओवर टू मिस्टर अनास्कर हेलो हेलो थैंक यू कृष्णा जी अपना सेशन का टाइमिंग था थ्री थर्टी से लेके थ्री टू थ्री थर्टी अभी तो ऑलरेडी डेज थ्री थर्टी लेकिन कृष्णा जी ये टाइमिंग आपने बढ़ा दिया है ना थ्री से अच्छा साढ़े तीन से चार बजे तक टाइमिंग बढ़ा दिया है ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू कृष्णा जी अभी अभी कृष्णा जी ने कहा कि बैंकिंग रेगुलेशन एक्ट के बारे में कुछ लोग बोलते हैं कि अच्छा है कुछ लोग बोलते हैं कि थोड़ा सा उसमें अमेंडमेंट की जरूरत है मेरे साथ अतुल खेर, खेरवाड़कर साहब साहब हैं जो कल्याण जनता सहकर बैंक के एमडी डी है प्रकाश जैन है फॉर्मर एडिशनल एडवोकेट जनरल है उन्होंने बहुत सारा स्टडी उनके लीगली है लेकिन इसमें दो आस्पेक्ट मैं कवर करना चा, चाहता हूँ एक लीगली और सेकंड लॉजिकली लीगल जो बात है वो जैन साहब बोलेंगे लॉजिकली जो जिन सेक्शन के बारे में ये सेक्टर को थोड़ी ग्रीवेंसेस है अपनी अपनी वो सेक्शंस इम्पोर्टेंट सेक्शंस हैं सेक्शन टेन आरबीआई बी आई टू अपॉइंट मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर होल टाइम डायरेक्टर इन यू एंड प्रिस्क्राइब देयर एलिजिबिलिटी क्राइटेरिया एंड टेन उसके बारे में थोड़ा सा अर्बन कॉपरेटिव बैंकिंग सेक्टर को दिक्कत है ऐसा मुझे लगता है सेकंडली अगेन लॉजिकली सेक्शन 10 ए एट लीस्ट फिफ्टी वन परसेंट ऑफ डायरेक्टर्स टू बी इंक्लूड पर्सन विद प्रोफेशनल एंड अदर एक्सपीरियंस थर्ड टेन ईयर ऑफ बोर्ड एंड डायरेक्टर्स टेन ईयर ऑफ बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्टर्स दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आस्पेक्ट Because as per the 97 Constitutional Amendment, this the amendment is still in exist. It is applicable for the multi-state and union territory also. As per the 97 Amendment, the tenure of the board is five years, and at the same time, as per the Bihar Act, the tenure a, a person cannot remain as a director for more than eight years. They have not used the words continuously. इट मीन्स ब्रोकन पीरियड इज ऑल्सो इंक्लूडेड इन दैट सो ये दो इसमें दिक्कत है हाउ टू कैलकुलेट दैट पीरियड ऑफ एट ईयर्स सपोज द एज पर द नाइन्टी सेवन अमेंडमेंट देर इज बायलॉज एंड द स्टेट एक्ट द पीरियड इज फाइव ईयर्स एंड द सेकेंड टर्म ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर डायरेक्टर इज फॉर द रिमेनिंग पीरियड मीन्स ओनली फॉर थ्री ईयर्स तो बीच में उसको इलेक्शन कंडक्ट करना पड़ेगा फोर्थ वन इज Power to RBI to remove the directors and appoint a suitable person as a member of the board of directors in the place of the place of the person as removed. इसके बारे में भी थोड़ी दिक्कत हो सकती है. 
सेक्शन टेन बी पावर टू रिमूव दिस चेयरमैन ऑफ द बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्टर इसके बारे में बहुत ही सेक्टर को दिक्कत हो सकती है सो so, ये सेक्टर के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू मैं लॉजिकली आपको बोलता हूँ लीगली मिस्टर जैन इज बेटर देन एनी वन ही कैन एक्सप्लेन सेक्शन ट्वेल्व कोऑप कोऑपरेटिव बैंक्स टू बी मैनेज बाय होल टाइम डायरेक्टर होल टाइम चेयरमैन ये भी uh, ये बात है थोड़ी कंसर्न है एंड फोर्थ वन कैपिटल रेजिंग ऑप्शन टू यू सेक्शन थर्टी सिक्स ए बी पावर टू आर बी आई टू अपॉइंट एडिशनल डायरेक्टर दिस इज ऑल्सो वन मोर कंसर्न पॉइंट एडिशनल डायरेक्टर वो में मेंबर होना चाहिए मेंबर नहीं होना चाहिए कुछ भी उसमें कुछ मेंशन नहीं किया ए पर्सन हु इज नॉट एट ऑल ए मेंबर ऑफ दी यू सी बी दैट पर्सन ऑल्सो कैन बी अपॉइंटेड बाई दी आर बी आई सो सेक्टर के हिसाब से सेक्टर से पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दे स्मॉल पॉइंट्स छोटे छोटे पॉइंट्स मैंने अभी रेज किए आस्क मिस्टर जैन Uh, to explain the legal views and uh, suppose if you want to present something no uh, thank you am i audible yeah. yes this is a, i would say that this 2020 amendment is very very important amendment and we need to look into the same with lot of seriousness first and foremost when the constitution of india came to be formed the framers of the constitution of india gave powers with respect to cooperatives to the respective state legislatures meaning thereby that all the subjects in relation to cooperatives will be the domain of concerned state legislatures two judgments of honorable supreme court recently given one in relation to application of securitization act and second in relation to 97th amendment honorable supreme court unequivocally states that so far as cooperative societies are concerned the subject regarding incorporations regulation and winding up is within the domain of the state legislature therefore the first and fundamental principle would be that whether the parliament who does not have the power to legislate under the scheme of the constitution of india which is the supreme document can parliament amend the banking regulation act and bring the provisions in such a manner that the concerned state governments cooperative societies laws become redundant aap sab jante hain ki samvidhan is supreme samvidhan mein jab samvidhan accept kiya gaya hamare framers ne ye desh ko diya to 26 january 1950 se jis samvidhan ko hum swikruti de rahe hain aur hum sab log इसके दायरे में काम करने के लिए बंधे हुए हैं तो संविधान में ऐसा लिखा है कि हर राज्य की स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर को कोऑपरेटिव सब्जेक्ट के लिए कानून बनाने का अधिकार है और ये कानून बनाने का अधिकार कोई भी राज्य के सिवाय किसी के पास नहीं है तो प्रश्न ये होता है दैट कैन the parliament make a provisions with respect to the subject which is within the domain of the state legislatures two judgments of the supreme court say no two judgments of the supreme court one in securitization act has stated that if it is in relation to banking very interesting point is there so far as banking is concerned पार्लियामेंट हैज पावर अंडर एंट्री 45 लिस्ट वन सो बैंकिंग है वो पार्लियामेंट के दायरे में है इसीलिए बैंकिंग के विषय के बारे में जो भी कानून पार्लियामेंट करती है बैंकिंग रेगुलेशन में रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट में कुछ भी विच इज रिलेटेबल टू बैंकिंग इट वुड बी विद इन द कॉम्पिटेंस ऑफ पार्लियामेंट बट the moment the issue goes very fine distinction is there it is in relation to incorporation regulation 
and winding up. Regulation means control in all state laws, whether it is Gujarat, Bombay, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, every state would have the provisions with relation to regulations. Supersession of committees, removal of a member, all those provisions are well built in the concerned state cooperative laws. Therefore, the moot point is that when the Constitution of India says that this power is available with the state government, state legislature, can Banking Regulation Act made provisions in such a manner which would determine that aapke director ki mariyada aat saal se jyada nahi hogi. Koi cooperative societies act mein nahi hai. To ab kya karenge jab ye kanun 26 june 20,000 vis se a gaya, pehli june 2,000 vis ko, koi director phir se 15 or 5 saal ke liye chunav jit gaya hai. और उसने 26 जून 2020 को 10 साल पूरा हो गया है, तो ये कानून का लिटरल इंटरप्रिटेशन करेंगे, तो इसको ये डायरेक्टर की पोस्ट छोड़नी पड़ेगी। Now that director is elected, that committee member is elected, that board member is elected in accordance with the state law of that particular state, whether it is Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, Gujarat, or any state. Under that election rules, he is elected. Under the bylaws, he was qualified to contest the elections and there was no inhibitions. And we, voters have voted and elected him for the third time. This law would say that since eight years have been over, he is not entitled to continue. In my understanding, this is a encroachment on the state's power encroachment on the functioning of a cooperative society, cooperative bank. So long as banking subject is there, suppose tomorrow Reserve Bank theoretically, a provision is made in banking regulation that bank shall work from 8 o'clock in the morning till 12 o'clock and thereafter there would be recess of one hour and from 2 o'clock to 8 o'clock. This is within the banking powers. Therefore, you can make the provision. But with respect to regulations, with respect to winding up, with respect to the eligibility of the directors, these provisions are absolutely uncalled for. Second important point which needs to be understood and appreciated is that Cooperative societies have a historical perspective. They are the persons who got together with the object to achieve particular things. Initially, the people had not gathered to make profit. They desired some banking activities, some loan activities, some farmers' activities, something to be done. Even banking activities to, pro to see that all members get the banking facilities. Therefore, these provisions which gives unbridled power to Reserve Bank of India are subject matter of challenge in different high courts. In as many as seven high courts, in Madras High Court, in Karnataka High Court, in Bombay High Court, in Rajasthan High Court, in Madhya Pradesh High Court, in Chhattisgarh High Court, this subject is under consideration. Of course, High courts have not granted stay against implementation of these provisions of law. So legally it can be said that these provisions are operating now. They are applicable. So what is the effect? On the one hand, a person is duly elected by the voters in the elections. In accordance with bylaws of that cooperative bank, in accordance with the rules of that state, in accordance with the provisions of that act. And on the other hand, this provision says that eight years and no more. In my understanding, this is a very, very crucial point because cooperative societies are, Supreme Court has time and again said, they are not the central government or state government or a government-run body. They are altogether independent organizations. In the light of this, Reserve Bank of India has filed the petition before the Honorable Supreme Court 
saying that all the cases be tagged together and be placed together. But according to me, the things which are required to be done in a particular manner has to be done in that manner. However good idea may be, however good intentions may be, but if in a separation of we are a union of states, India is a nation where different states have different laws, different uh, requirement and different situations. So what may be necessary in Tripura or Nagaland may not be necessary in Maharashtra or in West Bengal or in Tamil Nadu. Therefore, with respect to certain subjects, different state legislatures are given power to enact the laws as per their requirement. And cooperative is one such subject. In the light of this, I would say that these provisions are inroads into the state governments and state legislatures' powers. That is one. Second, it takes away the independence of cooperative societies under their bylaws, rules, and the act of that particular state. And third, Reserve Bank of India becomes absolute authority with respect to not only banking. I have already said, with respect to banking, Reserve Bank of India has absolute powers. But with respect to how my director should be, in a government employees cooperative bank, bank in a workers cooperative bank, in a women's run cooperative bank, in a farmers run cooperative bank, in a weavers uh, run cooperative bank, there may be hardly anybody who may be graduate in a remote area, in tribal areas or some other places. So how do you engage this 51% experts into a cooperative bank, which is of women, which is of workers, which is of weavers, or which is of uh, government employees. So in my understanding, the concept of these provisions is equated, as it is in, in English said, that you can't uh, equate chalk and cheese together, or apple and uh, bananas together, or apple and orange together. It is like this. So for HDFC Bank, which has 1,15,000 employees, 6,000 branches across the country and the world in the other countries, who has, the bank has 15 lakhs crores deposits. So what is required, because they would be required to have expert in their board like this. So what is required for HDFC would be the necessity in a women's cooperative bank, in a workers' cooperative bank, in a weavers' cooperative bank, and in such other cooperative banks of diverse activities. So I think that there is no rational, no logic. All of us are aware that there are cooperative banks with annual turnover of few crores of rupees. Very few crores of rupees turnover would be there. Very limited capital would be there. But then you insist that such high standards be applied for those cooperative banks. So a rationality is required in these provisions. A logical approach is required. Therefore, a concept has to be, according to me, I have serious doubt about these provisions of law to be applicable to cooperative bank because these are the inroads into the state legislature's constitutional autonomy under Article 246, assuming that there is a laudable purpose, there is a very, very noble purpose, then it has to be in a particular context. You can't uh, equate a small village level cooperative bank or a small urban cooperative bank with a limited company bank with a huge turnover of thousands of crores of rupees or lakhs of crores of rupees. So this is one of the major issue which according to me the Federation needs to address then the question would be that what is the way out? About seven high courts are seized of the matter and they are considering this particular subjects which I have very briefly pointed out to you. Another way out is, Mere Isab say this Banking Regulations Act mein, there are three provisions. That is section four, 
section 53 and section 53A, which put together combinedly gives power to Reserve Bank of India and Central Government to take appropriate measures for keeping these provisions under suspension or not to implement for some time. I think that should be the proper course on the part of the Reserve Bank of India and Central Government till appropriate arrangements are made so that all banks manage their affairs, adjust their management, adjust their board in a manner which is, which is in tune with these provisions of law. I think I have used my time. Thank you, Mr. Jain. Hello. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Jain, sir. There are some doubts and there are some question in the minds of uh, my entire sector. Suppose if you go through the latest affidavit filed by RBI, the various courts, they are stating that affidavit, the whatever the Supreme Court has given judgment, the judgment is not at all applicable for the cooperatives, uh, uh, cooperative facility doing the banking business. These, the uh, uh, verdict is applicable only for the co cooperative society not doing the banking business. Because the principal object of the Banking BR Act is protect the interest of the depositor. And so protect the interest of the depositor, it is must for the RBI to regulate the banking activity. So this is first. Secondly, whether the tenure of the person, eight years, it is retrospectively or you can calculate for prospectively. This is the main issue. This first, the ordinance was issued on 26th of June 2020, and thereafter, in September, this ordinance is converted into the act since both the houses of parliament passed the law and president gave the assent with the law applicable from 26th of June 2020. If you read the provisions of the act, they are in presentia, means in present. So on the date on which this act has come into effect, that is on 26th of June 2020, whoever has completed eight years and whoever is in the board, he is inviting the wrath of this particular provisions of law. In fact, as you pointed out, if I can take two minutes, three situations may arise. Take the case where on 20, because 26th of June 2020 is the most relevant date. Take the case that a person who has completed 26, uh, say, 10 years on 1st June 2020, and in the election held on 2nd June 2020, he is elected for five years. So he retires in 2025, 31st May. Now, this law would mandate him to vacate the office. Because on 26th of June 2020, he had completed eight years. That is one situation. Situation number two, that after 26th of June 2020, he is elected in accordance with law for a period of five years, and during five years, he eight years get completed. What is the position? Third, in many banks and many cooperative banks have held the elections in last two years, and the board or committee members are elected for three years or five years as per their laws and bylaws. So what happens to those elections which are held in accordance with the provisions of that act, rules and bylaws? But this law says that whatever might have been said in other laws, what is stated in this law will apply, notwithstanding word is used. Therefore, whatever is stated in this amendment will apply. If that is the case, then very, very serious administrative, managerial, and functional issues arises in the present case. I think that even other laws, I had de dealt with a case where, in fact, in all the states, there is a law that whoever has more than two children, he will not be able to contest panchayat elections. But when this law was made applicable, the time was given that whoever is in office will not be disturbed. That is one. And secondly, a further period of one year was given so that the things get settled down. Here, immediately, it is like AK-47's uh, shooting 
immediately this provision should be made applicable. And it is said, I have come to know that uh, RBI's inspections and officers put the note that uh, this is a deficiency and therefore appropriate corrective steps be taken. I think uh, I would believe that this law will apply at once on the same day because if we consider eight years from 26 June 2020, though this act is passed on 26th of June 2020, it will have to wait for eight years for the purpose of its implementation and that is not the intention of the legislature as the words of this section says. And uh, what about the second point? The, hello, hello. Uh, the RBI stand regarding the, what they have filed, uh, the, they have filed a, uh, affidavit in various courts. They are saying that Supreme Court decision is not at all applicable for the uh, banking, for the cooperative banking sector. It is applicable for on, only the cooperative society. Uh, you say that Pata Samstan credit society and all these things. Yes, yes. They have filed an affidavit. Yes, I have, this, I have this answer to this point. There, is, there are three lists prepared in the Constitution of India under Schedule 7. List 1 is where parliament has power to enact the laws. And under that list, there is a entry number 45, which says banking. So with respect to banking, parliament has power. But then there is a state list. State governments are given absolute power with respect to those subjects which are referred to in list two. And there is entry 32. I read entry 32, which says like this, incorporation, regulation, and winding up of a cooperative society. So it is incorporation, means registrations. So anything dealing with registrations of a cooperative society is within the competence of state legislature. Then regulation. Regulations means control. So we have all the provisions in every state government's cooperative societies act where regulatory provisions are referred to in terms of notice for mismanagement, removal of member, disqualification, and such others. So there is a regulations. And in every cooperative societies act, there is a provision for winding up. No cooperative society makes any difference of a banking or other. It is the further classification. classification right. Therefore, initially, I have to be registered as a cooperative society, maybe with particular objects, a farmer's, for farmer's credit or for uh, welfare of uh, the laborers or anything like that. But the object is this. Therefore, what is material is that how do you deal with these constitutional provisions which say that state legislature have absolute power in relation to cooperative societies where no distinction is made. Therefore, I would say if the subject falls relating to banking, undoubtedly Reserve Bank of India will have the power. But if the subject is not in relation to banking, but it is in relation to management of the board, managerial issues, those would be within the realm of the state legislatures. Therefore, according to me, these provisions which are made with howsoever good objects, as I said, all the things have to be done in the manner in which it is prescribed. So it has to be done in the manner by which this constitutional law provisions provide. So honorable high courts of our country and the finally Supreme Court at one point of time will decide my arguments or the arguments of Reserve Bank of India that what is the position and what is the constitutional scheme. My understanding, because I had appeared with respect to 97th Amendment before the Supreme Court of India, I had raised the very converse argument before the Honorable Supreme Court. And Honorable Supreme Court did not accept and in terms held that so far as cooperative subject is concerned, it is within the domain of the state legislature and state legislature alone. Thank you, Jain Sir. Now I request Mr. Atulji to explain his views or to present his views. Thank you. <coughs> Hello. 
Thank you, Anaskar ji. And I thank NAPCAP for giving me the opportunity to talk. Maybe the time is short. Uh, both of these are lawyers. I am not. So I'm not going to talk law. And of course, whatever views I give, uh, please uh, do not ascribe them to the bank to which I belong, because my bank may have a different view. Uh, having said that, uh, uh, as a practical banker, I view things in two or three different aspects. One is, we say, this was not going to happen. After PMC, this was not going to happen. If we go to history, Anaskar Ji will uh, agree that we all people have a lot of dual control for us. So, you have a lot of dual control virtually here. Dual control virtually is over. Barring elections of the board, the only regulator is Reserve Bank of India. Nobody else. Now, what is the high court, what is the Supreme Court, what is the Supreme Court, what is the Supreme Court? As a normal banker, I don't have to give any money, I don't have to give any money, I don't have to give any money. So, as a banker, I look to it in a very totally different perspective. Yes, the provisions are difficult. A lot of inconsistencies are there on the ground and the regulation. But let me tell you, the expert committee report, uh, which you might have read, is 180, 185 pages. As far as this ATA concept is concerned, they have written only one line. Uska matlab ye hai ki ye jo art sal ka diya hai, hum usko mante hain. And there they left it. What it means is this: that they have endorsed the provisions of the BIR Act, ATS. The question of ret retrospective effect does not arise. And therefore, all the banks whose elections have been conducted post-September 20, they are facing difficult questions from Reserve Bank of India. What are they? That you have violated BR Act. Simply because the uh, ignorance of law is no excuse. Fine. Ignorance of law is no excuse. I am supposed to follow that. But Reserve Bank of India needs to understand one uh, clarity. They are not touching elections, although Reserve Bank of India has powers to conduct your elections. Of course, co complete control of your management is now with the Reserve Bank of India. Let us understand that very well. Uh, the way uh, the, the, the inspection is changing, you will realize how they are controlling. It's good. It's good for the sector. Because there are a couple of bad ships in the sector. If they are uh, weeded out, the sector is fantastic and would be a part of the dream which Amit Shahji was talking. Uh, I also remember, uh, as Jani Sam was saying, uh, Satish Maradi ji was a part of a state government committee uh, which was working on uh, a cooperative law for different cooperative activities. Of course, it has not seen the uh, light of the day. Possibly, some gode barata ke karke jo har ek state mein cooperative law hai, uske vijay se kuch parishaniya hai. Lekin banking ke liye, you cannot listen to anyone except Reserve Bank of India. और आपको मालूम होगा जब कोविड के दरमियान ये इंटरेस्ट ऑन इंटरेस्ट का एग्जामिशन आया था और मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ फाइनेंस ने गाइडेंस दिया था कि आपको दो साल का इनको इंटरेस्ट पे करना है और वाया स्टेट बैंक ऑफ इंडिया वो आपको रिमिट होगा आपको पता है या नहीं पता है मुझे पता नहीं है फॉर ऑलमोस्ट टू वीक्स बैंक वेर नॉट एक्टिंग एंड देन समबडी फ्रॉम आई बी टोल्ड द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ फाइनेंस दैट अनलेस आर बी आई इश्यूज अ सर्कुलर नो विल टच इट इसका मतलब क्या है कि भले मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ फाइनेंस ने उसको सर्कुलर दिया होगा पूरा गाइडलाइंस दिया था बट देन आरबीआई केम आउट विद टू पैराग्राफ सर्कुलर वर्चुअली इंडोसिंग व्हाट मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ फाइनेंस इज स्टेटेड व्हाट दिस मींस इज दैट इट इज द रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया व्हिच हैज ऑल द पावर्स नंबर 1 नंबर 2 इज एज फार एज 8 इयर्स इज कंसर्न या इलेक्शन प्रोसेस इज कंसर्न एज लॉन्ग एज रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया इज नॉट टचिंग यू विद द एडवाइजरी आई सिंसियरली बिलीव दैट द कोऑपरेटिव लॉ विल प्रिवेल it would mean that you may have one or two or three or five directors who have completed more than eight years. Because there is no prescription on this, number one. Number two is, once your election is done, Reserve Bank of India is going to ask you a question. You have violated BR Act. Here's the reality, ground reality. Now the ground reality and the rule uh, making element in this, this, that gap is there. That gap is required to be bridged and I'm being, I understand that Reserve Bank of India is working on how to implement that with the help of NAPCAP and Federation. I mean, we have given a lot of representation how this could be implemented. There are all inconsistencies. 
I do not know what the High Courts or Supreme Courts uh, verdict will come, whether the Sarkaria Commission, whether it's a state subject or a central subject. As a corporate banker, I am not touched or impacted immediately. I am touched and impacted immediately with the provisions which are applicable. Now, my returning officer will not be able to implement the BIR Act. Why will it not do it? It will see the state cooperative law, the rules of the election, or the multi-state rules of the election. वो इलेक्शन करवा देगा अब ये तुम्हारा बी आर का अमेंडमेंट जो अब हम सबको जो सेक्शन 56 की जो अम्ब्रेला थी ना वो निकल गई जब सेक्शन 56 की अम्ब्रेला निकल गई इसका मतलब ये है एज अ कॉपरेटिव बैंकर वी वेर फोकसिंग ऑन दी 56 सेक्शन 56 अब क्या हुआ पूर, लगभग पूरा बी आर आपको अप्लाई हो गया इसका मतलब ये है कि जो प्रोविजन हम लोग पिछले बार नॉर्मली जो सोचते नहीं थे वो सोचना जरूरी है पॉइंट नंबर वन मुझे एक कॉपरेट बैंकर ने पूछा सर आप मुझे बोल रहे हो कि ये बायलॉज अमेंडमेंट आरबीआई को परमिशन के लिए भेजना पड़ेगा तो मैंने उनको बताया कि ये जो बी एक्ट है ना इज वर्चुअली अ मिरर इमेज ऑफ कंपनीज एक्ट ऑफकोर्स नाइनटीन फॉर्म फिफ्टी सेवन कंपनी कंपनीज एक्ट इज गॉन बट द कंपनीज एक्ट करंट प्रोविजन आर वर्चुअली इंपोर्टेड इन टू द बी आर एक्ट फॉर ईयर्स टूगेदर और आपको और कॉपरेटिव बैंक्स को वर्चुअली कॉर्पोरेट कंपनी लॉ की तरह ट्रीटमेंट मिलने वाली है तो उसमें क्या है उन्होंने एक डेफिनेशन दी है कि भाई आपके जो बायलॉज है ना दोज वुड बी इक्वेलेंट टू आर्टिकल्स एंड आर्टिकल्स ऑफ एसोसिएशन एंड मेमोरेंडम ऑफ एसोसिएशन इट वुड मीन दैट यूर बायलॉ इज इक्वेलेंट टू आर्टिकल्स ऑफ एसोसिएशन इन द कंपनीज लॉ एंड इफ देर इज अमेंडमेंट रिक्वायर्ड इन आर्टिकल्स एंड मेमोरेंडम यू आर रिक्वायर्ड टू सीक इफ यू आर अ बैंकिंग कंपनी यू आर रिक्वायर्ड टू सीक प्रायर अप्रूवल ऑफ रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया एज अ कॉरलरी अंडर सेक्शन फोर्टी नाइन सी यू आर टू सीक प्रायर अप्रूवल ऑफ रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया रिजर्व वो बी आर एक्ट में कहीं नहीं लिखा है कि बायलॉज का अमेंडमेंट क्यों हम आर बी आई के पास जाए दिस इज द कॉरलरी दैट वी आर नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड और एक चीज मैं आपको बताना चाहूंगा कि बी आर एक्ट के कम से कम 25 प्रोविजन ऐसे हैं जो हमको टच कर रहे हैं वो 25 प्रोविजन के बारे में बात करना चाहूँगा तो समय ही नहीं पूरा पड़ेगा लेकिन दो तीन चीज़ें मुझे लगती है कि वो आपको बिल्कुल ध्यान में रखनी है वन इज आपका जो ऑडिट होता है ना वो स्टैचुरिटी ऑडिट होने के बाद में आप क्वालिफाइड रिपोर्ट ऑडिटर से एक्सेप्ट मत करो या ऐसी कोई चीज़ करो ही मत को आपकी आपका रिपोर्ट क्वालिफाई हो जाएगा आपको लगेगा ही नहीं सिर पर डंडा कहाँ से पड़ा है क्योंकि ये क्वालिफाइड रिपोर्ट अगर होता है You cannot declare dividend. That is section 2060. That has been made applicable to you. So, ऐसी like, कम से कम सौ चीजें हैं, छोटी-छोटी हैं, ध्यान भी रखनी है. तो बिहार एक तकलीफें हैं, लेकिन मुझे नहीं लगता है कि जिनको सीधा काम करना है, उन्हें इसकी तकलीफ होगी. Directors जो हैं, आपने अमित शाह ने कहा, expert committee, expert committee के report में एक शब्द का इस्तेमाल किया गया है. वो ये कहते हैं एक्सपर्ट कमेटी कि नजिंग देम फॉर कंसोलिडेशन राइट एंड देन अमित शाह जी ऑल्सो सेड जरा जवानों को भी जगा दो आई थॉट अमित शाह जी वॉज टॉकिंग ऑफ बी आर एक्ट विदाउट रेफरिंग टू एनी सेक्शन टू इट इज वॉट आई बिलीव आई कैन कंटिन्यू टू टॉक ऑन दिस बट आई बिलीव दैट टाइम इज अ कंस्टेंट थैंक यू अनास्कर जी फॉर अलाउिंग मी टू टॉक थैंक यू थैंक यू अतुल जी नाउ आई मस्ट कंक्लूड माई uh, सेशन पहले तो जैन साहब ने बोला कि एक्चुअली लॉट अबाउट द लीगल इश्यूज एंड ऑल दिस थिंग अतुल जी ने बोला कि ये लॉ अच्छा है अपने लिए अच्छा है बिकॉज इट ब्रिंग्स फिनेंशियल डिसिप्लिन इन दिस सेक्टर दोनों ने अपनी अपनी तरफ से अपने अपनी व्यूज रखे हैं मैं बोलता जैन साहब ने जो बोला है कि हमने कोऑपरेटिव सोसाइटी अवर रजिस्ट्रेशन अथॉरिटी स्टेट गवर्नमेंट बट अवर लाइसेंसिंग अथॉरिटी इज आरबीआई आर बी आई इश्यूड ए लाइसेंस फॉर एस एंड जो इसमें एम्बिग्यूटी बहुत है सो मैं नेफकअप को प्रेसिडेंट साहब को और कृष्णा जी को एक सजेस्ट करना चाहता हूँ जो जैन साहब ने जो सजेशन दिए जब तक ये एम्बिग्यूटी है ये क्लियर नहीं होती कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ लॉ में तब तक हम फाइनेंस मिनिस्ट्री को अमित जी साहब को रिक्वेस्ट करेंगे तब तक जितने भी प्रोविजन रिलेटिंग टू मैनेजमेंट है जितने भी प्रोविजन बैंकिंग रिलेटेड प्रोविजन वी डोंट डिमांड द स्टेप फॉर दो प्रोविजन लेकिन बिकॉज बैंकिंग बिकॉज ऑलवेज द बी आर एक्ट इज इनेक्टेड बाई द सेंट्रल एंड बी आर एक्ट इज अ स्पेशल एक्ट 
our cooperative act is a general law there are lots of case laws the supreme court decisions are there he always the provision of special acts overrides the provision of general law ye theek hai there is accepted fact lekin jahan tak ye ambiguity khali control of management ke bare mein hai control of banking activities ke bare mein kisi ke man mein sandeh nahi rbi is the supreme body what atul ji said is right what jain sahib is also accepted that view only the control of management aap aapke chairman ko without giving any notice without uh, giving any hearing uh, usko hum nikal dene ka adhikar agar reserve bank ko hai reserve bank ke additional director aapne ek main kissa batata hu aapko that is very interesting rbi ne ek aadmi ko additional director bol ke ek bank mein bombay mein rakha rakhne ke baad jo board meeting chalu hone ke baad koi bhi director baat karne ko taiyar nahi आदले आदले दिन एक मीटिंग होती थी उनकी और आदले दिन मीटिंग मीटिंग में जो कुछ होता था दूसरे दिन एडिशनल डायरेक्टर के सामने क्या बात कर, करेंगे कुछ नहीं तो ये एम्बिगिटी जब तक क्लियर नहीं होती होती, होती तो नेपकअप शुड मेड ए रिक्वेस्ट टू सेंट्रल टू स्टे फॉर दिस प्रोविजन रिलेटिंग टू ओनली मैनेजमेंट नॉट बैंकिंग बैट सॉल्व थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू थैंक यू चेयरमैन एंड panel members well frankly the discussion was of a very high level but i think at the end of the discussion we are back to square one as to where we are we don't know okay perhaps uh, i mean as far as i know uh, till now the arguments that had taken place in the uh, madras high court uh, was centering around what is called uh, some pith and do uh, substance doctrine yes pith and substance yeah pith and substance doctrine where which is the pith and which is the substance is the discussion as far as the banking regulation act amendment is concerned and uh, now that it has gone to supreme court perhaps that same arguments will continue there and uh, we will get some clarity about it thank you very much uh, may i request uh, Mrs. Alka, Mr. Binde, and Mr. O.P. Sharma to come over the stage to uh, give. Uh, aye, aye, jaldi, jaldi, jaldi. Uh, uh, Mrs. Alka, ji, give a uh, presentation to Mr. Anaskar. बिंदे साहब मिस्टर प्रकाश जानी को मिस्टर ओ पी शर्मा मिस्टर अतुल खेवाड़ को देखिए 